Hey guys, Paul here from FamilyWheels.ca. Thanks for tuning in. I'm kind of excited about today's review because it's the new 2016 Volvo XC90. Not a lot of people have gotten behind the wheel of this yet. And uh, it's a big deal for Volvo as well because this is the first new release that Volvo's come out with since its uh, new Chinese ownership. You know, the other famous Swedish company is, of course, IKEA. And if we look at this IKEA lamp that's been sitting by my bedside for the last couple of years, yes, it's Swedish designed, it's very sleek, but it's made in China. And that's freaking a lot of people out. Is that what's gonna happen with Volvo? Well, no, not with the new XC90. Certainly not with their high-end products. They're vowing to stay put right where they are. In fact, Volvo has hired new staff in their Swedish and Belgium factories. The other prop I have is the product pamphlet <clears throat> that I was given to read over before taking this for a test drive. 93 pages. This vehicle, it might look slightly similar, but guess what? Uh, the old XC90 was 13 years old. It was getting to be a bit long in the tooth, a couple of changes here and there, but really it was largely the same vehicle from 13 years ago. Well, really with the new XC90, you don't expect much in the way of uh, old things to carry over because yeah, there was a lot of reading for me to do. Let's go check it out and see what it looks like from the inside out and how it'll do for families as well. So, what has changed in the XC90 anyway? From the chassis to the engine, the interior space, it's all different. In fact, Volvo has spent $14 billion in the development of the XC90 and its platform because it's going to be using a lot of the same underpinnings for years to come in the Volvos that will be rolled out here in the next few years. So let's start with the engine. You've got two options in the XC90, starting with the T6, which is no longer a six-cylinder turbocharged engine. Instead, it's a four-cylinder, two-liter engine. You're wondering how on earth can a large SUV like this drive down the street without languishing about with just two liters? Well, Volvo's put both a supercharger and a turbocharger onto it, which means that it gives you the power that's needed when you're just driving around the city or on the highway. The other option that you've got with the XC90 is the T8. That won't be available in Canada until sometime in the winter, probably January or February, according to Valentine Volvo, the dealership that has given us this car for the day. And it's going to have both the 2-liter engine up front, but also driving the rear wheels, a completely electric engine. You can either plug that in like any other electric car and drive it around just like that, an electric vehicle, or it can be used as a typical hybrid with the front engine charging the batteries for the rear. Either way, the fuel economy on that T8 is going to be incredible. The T6 also has around nine and a half, ten 10 liters per 100 kilometers driving about the city. I'm seeing those numbers today. Let's talk about interior comfort here for a moment because it's something that's really important to Volvo owners and it's something that Volvo is famous for. And you know what? It continues to be fantastic. The seats are supportive, comfortable, wonderful. The uh, driver layout is fantastic. They use now an LCD display in front of the driver. It's entirely digital. One thing I love is that when you're driving through school zones or you're driving through the city, um, the speedometer picks up on the GPS information and tells you what the speed limit is in the area and gives a little ping too if maybe you're getting a little bit too excited and have gone over the speed limit. It says, hey, watch out this school zone here, 30 kilometers an hour, you might want to back it off. I really like that. Now, now if we look at the infotainment system, it's basically a tablet built into the dash and if you've ever used an iPad, you'll be really comfortable using this technology. You can swipe through it very easily with the touchscreen technology to go from a fantastic navigation system to the media center to Bluetooth technology and driver performance, things like uh, how are your liters per hundred kilometers looking, that sort of thing. One thing that I don't particularly like about the XC90 is the center console. To me, it seems a little bit high, and even as a tall person who set the seat as I like it, I'm finding that I have to kind of crank my elbow up just a little bit in terms of uh, finding a good place for my elbow to sit. It's not entirely comfortable. Now, if Volvo is famous for its comfort, it is even more famous for safety. It is obsessed with safety, in fact, and that hasn't changed with the new XC90. The old XC90 had a top <clears throat> safety rating from the IIHS. It actually hasn't come out with a safety rating yet, uh, that organization, for the new XC90, but Volvo is saying that it could have one of the safest vehicles ever made on its hands here. That's all part of Volvo's Vision 2020 strategy, where it's hoping that by the time 2020 rolls around, 
there will be no more fatalities in Volvo vehicles, regardless of the size of the collision. It's a lofty goal, but it's something that if anyone can do, it could be Volvo. One thing that I really like about the new XC90 is that even though it's a completely redesigned vehicle, it has more amenities, it's actually just the same price as the old XC90. And that's really undercutting the competition here, which includes the BMW X5, the Audi Q7, and the Mercedes GL. They can't touch the XC90 in terms of trim and finish on their base level models. This uh, Momentum package is the base model starting at 61 grand and it has so much great stuff in it for a base model. Things like a massive moonroof, comfortable leather seats, the uh, touchscreen infotainment system, those fantastic safety features I was talking about. It really does make the XC90 stand out in this class. So that's the Momentum package. The next level up is the Inscription package, which starts at around $67,000. And you know, to be honest with you, there are some things that I prefer about the Momentum. These leather seats aren't as soft and plush, but they also won't stain as easily. The leather in the Inscription package is gorgeous, and it comes from, a, uh, from an Italian village high up in the mountains that has particularly soft leather. But that leather will stain quite easily when it comes to uh, children spilling things and it'll scratch up a lot more too. This Momentum base model leather is very comfortable and it'll do the trick for families much better, I think. All right, guys, it's time to do some of our standardized tests and we've got Roger joining me in the back seat. Thank goodness for Cheerios to the rescue once more. And uh, I wanted to show you, first of all, the third row. So the second row is uh, is quite impressive in terms of leg room. It's looking quite good. One of the things that I really like about it, there's a handle right down here on all three of the seats that allows me to bring the seat forward or backward, depending on how much space that I need, based on uh, what kind of users are in this second row. That means that the third row could potentially get more leg room as well if it's a bit tight back there. And I'll show you how to get back there. You just hold this this um, this clasp right here, bring it forward, slide it, and there you go. There's the third row. Seat seven people. Volvo's saying that people up to five seven can sit back here comfortably. That's based more on legroom than headroom because at six two, I'm actually not doing too badly back here, but legroom certainly is fairly tight. The third row also gets venting so that uh, they can keep warm or cool back here depending on the climate. Sometimes when you're back in the third row, it can feel pretty stuffy, but the Volvo stays nicely ventilated. Let's check out what it looks like now back here in the cargo area. One thing I like about the Volvo, check this out, if I've got the key in my pocket, I can kick down here and the trunk should open up on its own. There it goes. And this is our standardized trunk test. You can see we've got our typical amount of stuff, a, um, a backpack, a couple bags of groceries, diaper bag, a ball, and a fold-up stroller. And that is really maxed out when you've got the third row up. Obviously, tons more space when the third row is down, but, uh, but uh, we are really maxed out here with that third row up, just to give you a sense. Third test takes us over to Roger, hey buddy, looking at a rear-facing child seat, which does soak up a lot of space, and what that means for legroom in the front passenger seat. And here we go, I've got my measuring tape out and ready to go. Yeah, we've got 13 inches of legroom for the front passenger, which is actually quite, quite respectable. The most respectable of any vehicle that we've tested so far on family wheels, in fact. And for me, at six foot two, even with Roger sitting back there soaking up all that room in the rear facing child seat, check it out. Tons of headroom and lots of leg room for me as well. Okay, so we're stuck in a traffic jam here on my way to turn this thing back in. And I had a good opportunity for me to uh, kind of give a final wrap on this uh, XC90 with you. I have to say, I come from a long line of Volvo owners. My parents had one in the 60s and 70s. My aunt had one through the 80s. We have one now, uh, that we have a family. And I was a little bit worried, as I know many Volvo owners are, about what would happen to the brand after it was bought up by a massive Chinese corporation. If anything, this vehicle has been uh, just improved upon and become so much better. I wanted to go over a few of my uh, final 
scores with you here out of five to give you a sense for my take on it. Let's first look at driver comfort. I'm going to give it a four out of five. I love the cockpit in this vehicle. The seats are incredibly comfortable. Everything is quite intuitive. There are a few things that I don't like about it. Um, I don't like the fan noise in this car. Um, RXC70 station wagon has a pretty noisy fan even when it's at a low fan speed. I thought maybe that was a one-off thing. Well, even in this, that's still the case. It is a bit of a noisy fan. I also uh, found that when my wife was driving this around for uh, a little while, she was finding that she was bumping the buttons on the steering wheel a lot. Uh, as she was making, you know, a turn, a left-hand turn uh, through an intersection or whatever, that she would change the radio station, turn the level of volume up, whatever, and it kind of got a little bit annoying for her. It's one of those things that you just have to get used to, I suppose, be a little bit more careful around the steering wheel as you're getting around town. One thing that uh, I don't like, and this could just be a personal thing because it all real luxury cars are going this way, is the uh, keyless entry. Um, I have a cousin, just a little antidote here. He was uh, going to go pick up his wife from the airport, this was years ago now, and his BMW. Well, it turns out that he hangs his key fob in the garage right next to his car. Uh, he pulled out of the garage. The key wasn't actually in the car, but it still started. Drove out of the park, uh, drove out of the driveway, and all of a sudden he was stuck with this uh, with this car at the airport that didn't have a key. Devin and I were uh, driving around a little bit. I hopped out to go shoot some video of her in the car today, and the same thing happened to us. A little message popped up on the screen that warned Devin that there was no longer a key in the cabin. And, you know, with the busy life of a family, a kid in the back, whatever, I can totally see that happening to us and then one of us being stuck. For our family wheels trunk test, I'm going to give it a three and a half um, because when that third row is up, it is quite limited back there in terms of space, but you flip that third row down, all of a sudden you're made in the shade. But uh, another nice thing about the Volvo is that if you wanted to, you could split the third row. So if you've got, a say, a sixth passenger with some gear back there, you could make that kind of configuration which is nice. In terms of drivability this is getting a four and a half out of five that's my highest rating ever for drivability. Our XC70 station wagon it kind of rolls a little bit through uh, tight corners and it does feel a little bit sloppy. This is much 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 tighter in terms of ride and I just I've, I've really enjoyed being in this car today. Overall value on the Volvo I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Um, if you look at this compared to its competition this is so well equipped. The technology is so incredible. It really is the, the SUV of the future, and it's about 10 grand less than, uh, than its competition. So really, I mean, you know, if you're a longtime Volvo owner, I would say that if the XC90 is any indication as to where this company is going with its new ownership, there's nothing to worry about.